the second war for talent. If the first war was declared in 1997 by a consultant from McKinsey uh, and an expression that actually became a best-selling book, the second war for talent, make no mistake, uh, the first shot was fired with the global pandemic in March of 2020. We say hello to CEO uh, BJ Wurzen and the Chief Development Officer, uh, Sergeant at Arms, uh, Josh Wood. I call Josh the HR aficionado, partly for his love for cigars, but uh, great to have you guys. And I know we have received an awful lot of feedback from our previous post uh, uh, profiling West Shore Home and everything that uh, you are doing to win this war for talent. And just to put it into context, West Shore Home, you're into home improvements and renovations. It's bathrooms, it's, it's kitchens, it's remodeling, it's all kinds of things. But BJ, when did you get a sense? Let's start with you and then Josh, just jump in. When did you get a sense when you sat back and saw how this, you know, battleground, battlefield, whatever metaphor you want to use, uh, specifically with respect to talent was going to be so applicable to your growth and expansion plans moving forward? Well, you know, um, I was a member of Vistage for six or seven years. That's where we had originally met. And, you know, through many years of um, hearing different speakers and really understanding how to truly build a culture within an organization, you know, it just became apparent that a company is the people inside of it. And it's the collective behaviors and it's a collective mindset. And when you can build a team that has a collective mindset with shared values, that that is what is going to drive your, your organization forward. So several speakers in, after a while, the dots start to connect. Now that all of that vision, BJ, translates down to what Josh does in getting everything organized on the ground, I'm, I suspect. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it starts with a vision framework. You know, we hear it all the time, mission, vision, values, but it's real, right? And you got to build fundamental behaviors around those values that everybody comes to work every single day, all pulling for the same mission. And, and Josh, how does that translate to what your role and what you see? Because it's an incredible story when you think about it. Uh, when we met in 2018, you had, what, 130 employees? Now you're up mm -hmm. to 1,500. But Josh, I'd love to hear you weigh in on, on why it's so crucial to have that core uh, develop first before you expand. Yeah, I mean, I, I tell people all the time, my primary role is sort of the keeper of the story. I, I jokingly call myself the high priest of West Shore, right? I'm supposed to take the, uh, the sacred documents, uh, you know, just really, really uh, invest myself in understanding them and knowing them. And make sure the organization really understands them, understands what it means to uh, to embody the West Shore home mindset, uh, and then and then to grow that. And with the piece we're talking about, that was largely developed to um, create pull for our, our our internal culture, right? Want to find the right people. There's a ton of talented people out there that could do the work that we're doing, but a significantly smaller subset of those are capable of really understanding and and meshing with the West Shore homes very specific culture. Uh, we're not, we're not just here, you know, to, to get a paycheck. We're, we're on a mission that's, that's far above and beyond just the work that we do. And it takes a special mindset. It takes a special level of dedication to really invest yourself in, you know, finding out what you're capable of every single day, uh, because 1,500 other people are depending on your best efforts. And so it's my job to, to find those people that, that resonate with that, you know, bring them into the company, train them up in the company's mindset and then make sure that, that everyone's sort of reading from the same sheet of music, so to speak. And, and you know what, that brings up an interesting topic. And BJ, I, I, I really want to hear your thoughts on this because it's one thing and, you know, in the, in the work that I do, I, I see CEOs and, and, and high level executives all the time. Uh, and they would claim they have a great culture, but very, very few have, actually supplied the digital evidence, BJ, with what you did with uh, Lamp House Films. And I'd just like you to weigh in uh, on that discrepancy, that dichotomy, BJ, between talking about culture and then actually showing it to the world the way you did. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, 
it's what really drives us. I mean, some of this sounds cliche, but it, but it's so real. You know, it, it's, it's self-actualization. So Josh and I talk about it all the time. The, when we see people around here getting really excited about the meaningful work that they can do here, it's when we push them to do something that they didn't think they were capable of doing, right? We get some resistance. That goal's too big. It's too ambitious. I'm not sure we can get there. And then when they get there, they're just bought in. They're bought in 100%. And it's what really, that's what really builds the culture. So Josh and I sat down and said, we need to tell that story because people tell it for us. But when we can put it in video and we can use that to win this war on talent is when there's really no obstacle that can stand in our way. So is it safe to say, guys, that this video, signature video that you built around your culture actually helps people self-select out before they even apply? Is that what you guys are seeing tactically? So we're hoping for it. Yep. Uh, because I know some critics will say things like, well, geez, uh, you know, you, in, in a way you're, you're forcing people to drink company Kool-Aid and, and, and things of that nature. But I know you guys see this very differently. No, we would rather be right up front with them and tell them this is a high performance culture, high transparency, high accountability. If you want to go somewhere and hide, if you want to go somewhere and, and put it on cruise control, if you want to coast, this isn't the place for you. And we are, we are unafraid to tell them that right up front, because if we don't, they're going to take the job and get pushed out anyway. So we would rather just save everybody the time and the effort and just bring people into the culture that want to be here in the first place. Yeah. And Josh, I want you to jump in and weigh in on this factor, which is this didn't just happen overnight. Josh, speak to how long ago, I think we, we first met, we crossed paths in 2018. Mm -hmm. uh, we did a couple of workshops and Josh, I know you guys have been working on this for a long time. So speak to the journey just to get to that two minute video. So I was actually having this conversation earlier today with, uh, with someone I mentioned that you know, we've gotten some, a lot of feedback from other business leaders who want to understand how we do it. And I really attribute our ability to produce this film and to take this mindset uh, to the fact that we did the hard work of really, truly understanding the authentic story. We have a real story to tell. So that video we produce isn't aspirational. It's biographical, autobiographical. It's us saying, this is who we are, not who we hope to become, who we wish we were. This is who we are. So, and that took a lot of work and a lot of painful effort to get there. And and you were there for a lot of that work. I remember the first time you came in for the branding boot camp, um, you know, and you just pushed us and you know, describe your company. And, and the words we're laying out don't sound like words you want to use in a marketing pitch: aggressive, steamroller, competitive. Like those aren't words you want to you know throw out in a, in a commercial about you know bathroom models. Uh, but you said trust the process. And by the end of the day, and I'll let BJ speak more to the formulation of the you know, the consumer brand there. But by the end of the day, we had really started to zero in on an authentic identity that, that reflected what was. Uh, again, not what we hoped to be, but what actually was, because you know, it has to flow from your values, right? Because culture flows from values and then you know, your brand flows from that. And so it had to be real, it had to be authentic, it had to reflect the, the intentions of the leadership. Uh, and so it, it all started back in 2018 and 19, especially for me, is just really putting in the work to say, here's who we really are, and we're not gonna be afraid to tell the true story anymore. That, that's, that's the key point. I remember from that branding boot camp, you said, you can't be afraid of who you are. You can't hide it. You want to be polarizing. You want people to either love you or hate you. You don't want to be down the middle. You don't want to be vanilla. And I think especially not just in business, but today in general, people are so afraid to offend anybody that they can't be who they truly are. And if you just embrace who you are, you will pull not just customers, but the right talent and the right employees and the right individuals to accomplish your mission. Hey, can I, I want to um, go ahead. I'm sorry. Can I, can I give an anecdote to reinforce what BJ saying here? Yeah. You mentioned that, you know, the shot fired at the beginning of the, of the global pandemic. Uh, we got the call Thursday evening that our governor had, had basically shut down Pennsylvania. Everyone stay home, you know? And so we had from six o'clock that night till about eight o'clock the next morning, to become a remote workforce. To that point, we had never worked remotely. We had plenty of office space, didn't need to. It wasn't a business need, so we'd been in the office. So we came up with a technology policy, a, 
a work from home policy, just everything we needed to overnight. And by eight o'clock the next morning, we were sending people home to work. And there was a lot of concern about that. Like, you know, can they work in a distributed environment without any preparation or training? Can we manage them effectively? You know, can we, can we monitor their productivity and make sure we're getting the results? And what happened over the next few weeks was just uh, so gratifying and so encouraging. Um, we watched our, our team come together on our internal internet and just brag about their accomplishments. Our inside sales team was setting records in the, in the time when people were afraid to be around other people, you know, and, and, and worried about their health. We're still, you know, able to accomplish these massive goals and, and set appointments. And, and we developed a new internal hashtag, a rallying cry, West Shore Home Strong. One of our, one of our frontline managers sort of developed that. It became our rallying cry for the next six months. And it's that moment where you realize all the work you've done to tell the story, all the effort you put into building the culture, you realize at that moment it, it took, you know, we've actually accomplished this mission that there are people who are bought into what we're doing here and they believe in the mission, they believe in the vision and they're with us. And it was, uh, it was extremely gratifying and encouraging. BJ, I, I want to hear your thoughts on destination employer a little bit and, and where you came across that and what goes through your mind. Because when we look at, photographs, for instance, of the West Shore Home workforce, the men and women who are out there on the ground. And I know you're a, you're a huge advocate for, um, you know, ve promoting veterans and, and, and veteran causes and initiatives. But all of this, I think, BJ, is part and parcel of your vision to be a destination employer. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? <clears throat> So we're in a $500 billion industry, the home remodeling industry that is completely fragmented. There's been no consolidation. And you know, the reason is, is that there's, it's, it's graying out on the skilled labor side and there's not a lot of young folks coming in and wanting to work with their hands and do skilled labor and do carpentry. So, so part of that destination employer was we wanna make this fun again. We wanna make this interesting again and we wanna bring people in because we employ our own installers. We don't subcontract out the labor. And ultimately whoever controls the labor is gonna control that industry. So as we bring in these new young folks that wanna work, that wanna hustle, that wanna you know, provide for their families, we give them a great place to do that. And then it's, it, 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 it expands our entire organization. It's not just our frontline installers. It's the, the veterans that we've brought in. Um, it's, our, it's our senior leadership team that we're bringing in tremendous talent that we really want to, it, it's a technology enabled home improvement service. So we want to be a destination employer like a Google or an Apple or a really cool place to work, but do it in a blue collar industry that it's never been done before. That's fantastic. And I got to uh, jump in and, and ask the question, but also give you kudos. It seems that you've adopted a military mindset. And I know that uh, our friend Jocko has been very influential. Can you speak to that a little bit, uh, BJ? Because again, what I find fascinating about West Shore Home is that this success you're enjoying now is not an overnight success. It, it's been a, a, a lot of heavy lifting in the making. So uh, yeah, just touch on the uh, use of the military as a metaphor. Well, I mean, with Jocko specifically, it really came down to extreme ownership. You know, his New York Times bestselling book is called Extreme Ownership. And we had always been real big on personal responsibility, right? Taking accountability for your actions, taking accountability for your results, because you can't have a continuous improvement culture. You can't get better every single day. You can't do the things that we're doing and really be aggressive about owning your results until you own them yourself. And, you know, they're all in the military. They're all about extreme ownership. And, um, you know, a lot of the same values that we had as an organization completely aligned with them and it gave us a, a shared dialogue right a language that we use inside the organization about default aggressive and getting better every single day and extreme ownership that just really resonated with the entire organization honestly i feel like i want to go through a wall right now myself but but Let's josh go. yeah but josh how does this translate into on the ground and i some, something um, john dame was telling me about the uh, vistage chair in pennsylvania was that uh, you know you've got decentralized decision making so that basically boots on the ground can decide what's in the best interests of west shore home josh can you speak to that a little bit yes yeah, so, i mean that's the only way we're going to be able to scale this thing is to not have to micromanage it from here. It's moving too fast. Like 
we are, I mean, our, our tribal narrative is don't blink. Things happen really fast around here. And information just, there's just too much information to have to funnel through one or two decision points, right? So we are looking for, for leaders uh, remotely who have that uh, extreme ownership mindset, who want to take full ownership of, this is my region, this is my branch, this is my team. I understand the mission and I'm bought in. Um, and then they're going to go execute on that mission. And we have high confidence that the leaders we have in place are, are about that, right? But again, that goes back to having a clear story, having a clear narrative about who we are. So when we're, when we're meeting these, these, these leaders, these individuals, we're able to tell them, this is what you're you know, interested in becoming a part of. These are the expectations. This is where we're headed. And really spending, we spend more time on the culture of the company than the, uh, the tactics of the job in, in every interview, especially at that leadership level. You know, and especially me, I'll sit with them for you know hours at a time and say, "This is the company culture. This is how we respond to failure. This is how we respond to mistakes. This is how we you know expect the mindset of growth to be demonstrated, you know, in the day to day actions." And so, you know, having that having that unifying story, that 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 thread that says, "This is why you want to work here," uh, is what enables us then to bring in those high caliber leaders and then put them 1,000, 1,500, 2,000 miles away and have every confidence that they're going to execute the level that we're expecting uh, because, you know, they're bought in too. BJ, you're on an incredible trajectory. Tell me, and I think anyone watching this would be just fascinated to hear your pinch me. I can't believe this isn't a dream. You know, am I really watching this happen? Especially, BJ, when you consider how you started i think you started with what one cell phone and no customers i mean it was just me a um, couple thousand bucks a phone a computer and a desk i had no no backing no money no partners 15 years ago and you know like you said today we're over 1500 employees doing a half a billion dollars in in revenue and i mean i, I understand it's it's special i understand what we're doing is 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 really outside the norm but I, I try not to get too caught up in that because you know ego is the biggest killer in business and it's the biggest killer in life so we really start, try to stay grounded around here and even though we're, we're accomplishing amazing things and we celebrate our successes for me it's about staying humble every single day how do you do that bj how do you keep that level of perspective because honestly you're the same guy that i met you know what three or four years ago I mean, it's just keeping perspective that I am the same guy, right? You know, and that it, it, it's about the team. It's about the mission. And, you know, we, we have this internal um, workplace. It, it's a Facebook product. And every single day, people are on there talking about the mission of becoming the most admired U.S. home improvement brand, right? It's not about, hey, we have the greatest CEO in the country or, you know, we're, we're the best home improver. We're beating our competition or we're crushing these people. It's about a mission. And that's what keeps me grounded and humble. And I think that's what gets, like, um, gets everybody out of bed every single morning. Well, listen, uh, fellows, as we wrap this up, here, here's what I want you to do. I want you to really look the camera in the eye, really focus on anyone who's watching this, who's a business leader. Josh, we'll start with you. This is totally unrehearsed, which is why I love these Zoom calls. But Josh, <laughs> the one piece of advice, the one recommendation that you can make that you know how to win the second war for talent, what would you say? Uh, I would say that there absolutely is no culture without conflict. You have to fight for the culture that you want. Uh, it is a relentless, constant effort to maintain uh, just the same set of expectations, the same behaviors, the same, uh, you know, expected outcomes. That just takes a lot of work. It takes diligence uh, and hundred percent commitment. And it's more important than any skills gap you may find in your workforce is a, is a culture gap. So be very, very protective of it. And I would just say, don't be afraid of who you are, right? Embrace that, embrace your personality form that into your values, which will ultimately become your competitive advantage. And it doesn't matter what industry you're in, right? You can be the huggable car salesman or the default aggressive home remodeling company. It will work because you will serve a purpose to your end user. And that end user is not just your external customers. It's your internal customers, your employees, which really is your company. 
I've heard it said, uh, BJ and Josh, uh, that uh, when you can actually step into your own identity, only then will you uh, discover your destiny. It would appear that West Shore Home is uh, well on its way to achieving its ultimate destiny. And we thank you both very much for being part of this. Thanks, thank Gary. You. BJ Wurzen, the CEO of West Shore Home, uh, headquartered in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania, along with Josh Wood, the Chief Development Officer. And uh, we so admire the journey that uh, West Shore Home is on, especially when you consider its very humble beginnings. Uh, please feel free to share uh, this video with everyone in your network. Smash that like button. Really smash it with default aggressive uh, behavior. And as always, thanks for watching leaders and legends where you never know who you're going to meet or what you'll discover.